Right, welcome or welcome back. Myself and Andy are just going to take uh, a run via Arncliffe. Arncliffe? Arncliffe? Via Arncliffe. Over the tops, down to Elaine's Cafe. It's a nice little spot. So uh, if you like your biker calves, well, it's not a biker calf, it's a calf often frequented by bikers. I've just got my uh, AHA C6 Pro here in front of me. I've got it on uh, Apple navigation at the moment. You can see I've dispensed with the um, the Garmin. So I'll just alternate between navigation on this and also the video camera front and rear. And there you go, cracking rear view, probably doesn't come over particularly bright on the camera, but that's a perfect view there of the rear of the bike, the blind spots that you can't see, so absolutely perfect. And then you can just dive back into CarPlay and uh, go on to your navigation. Okay, here we go, off we go. Now then, <laughs> so the cameras are right at the risk of turning this into uh, <clears throat> a latter day version of the Iliad. Um, uh, I'd like to start by thanking Jonathan of the Wildlife Moto channel. And um, he uh, obviously uh, picked up on my GoPro woes and uh, suggested a bit of a remedial course of action. A remedial course of action. There were me thinking I'd gone through all the remedial courses of action by smashing them with a big hammer. Uh, but any road up, he said, look, before you give up completely, because I really, realistically, can't be affording two uh, brand new action cameras from either DJI or uh, Insta, if I can possibly avoid it. He said, before you give up on them, try this format no first job update the firmware now I had uh, previously uh, relied on updating the firmware on these cameras via the GoPro quick app but this time I did it by manually plugging the cameras into the computer going to the GoPro site and manually downloading the zip file containing the firmware update and uh, loading that onto the uh, SD card putting the SD card back in the camera and updating the camera I think that's the way I did it any road up what I would call uh, a manual firmware upgrade via the computer itself now what he also said was uh, format your uh, SD cards on the computer and then format them in the camera. Now, uh, which I haven't been doing to be fair. Now uh, I use top quality uh, SD cards, the proper top of the range SanDisk cards the uh, black and gold ones, not the red and gold ones. So uh, I use top quality SD cards, uh, 128 gigabytes. So uh, that's what I did. So I uh, formatted the cards in the computer, 
and before I pulled the cards out of the card reader I uh, manually ejected them via the computer then I put them in the camera and then uh, I uh, formatted the cards in the cameras and uh, oh at the risk attempting precedence so far so good now uh, you might see on this here camera looks a bit different I've just got it in a metal cage there's a bit more protection and because I can't be asked switching ND filters every two minutes I've uh, got this here um, adjustable variable ND filter which goes from like 0 to 400 uh, so I've got it set on ND8 at the moment because it's fairly bright but not that bright and I've got all the appropriate manual settings in the uh, helmet cam the GoPro Hero 12 to get the, the right sort of natural motion blur so the Hero 10 there on the bike that I just leave up completely automatic let it do its job but the main camera the helmet camera I always have on manual settings so I manually set uh, frame rate, shutter speed, ISO range and white balance. Oh and I, I, I manually set white balance on the, uh, on the other camera as well so that the two match. Aye so that's uh, my setup. Let's see how we get on. Now, that last video with the Moti Gut, Moto Gutsi from uh, Middleham to Kettlewell The uh, helmet camera, this camera lasted the whole duration It kept running for well, the length of the Enduro battery which is about an hour and a quarter, an hour and a half and no issues, kept going first time that's happened in a long while this camera the uh, bike mounted camera it was on the motor gutsy and the motor gutsy vibrates so much this thing was shaking like a shiting dog with the camera and I do know that that's enough to uh, shut down just about any action camera from uh, any manufacturer extreme vibrations so uh, I'm reckoning that's what that was and because this camera now on this bike that doesn't vibrate the bike bounty camera is still happily recording away I think the theory might be right and I think Jonathan you might have helped me out of a mess saved me a bit of brass for a while now don't get me uh, wrong long term come the point when in any event I would have looked at renewing the camera kit because it's all part and parcel of my stocking trade tools of the trade um, and let's go pro with their next camera come up with something absolutely outstanding right from left field then uh, I think it's very unlikely I'll be going down the GoPro route but if there's a fix for the time being until we see what the latest offerings from DJI and Insta are sometime uh, later this month then uh, well and good so thank you Jonathan, appreciate it buddy, go check out Jonathan's channel, Wildlife Moto, cracking channel. And there's 
summer holidays are now over here in the United Kingdom. Schools are back. People are back at work. The roads are back to being busier than a busy thing in the morning. So, speaking about the controversial aspects of equipment. I dropped on a video recently uploaded about four days ago by a very big American YouTube motorcycle channel, Yami Noon. Oh yes. All about the KTM camshaft controversy. So I thought, oh no, here we go, here we go. And uh, I think it's fair to say that his take was it's a far bigger problem than KTM are admitting to and it's a far bigger problem than people realise um, but to be fair I've watched the video from start to finish and uh, I didn't see him produce any hard numbers any empirical data it all seemed to be about Facebook groups and uh, anecdotal accounts. But he seemed to think that what had started as being regarded as something of a questionable urban myth was now something more substantial. And... Uh, that he believed that um, KTM have not resolved the problem in their uh, 2021 onwards bikes. Not solved the problem by increasing the width of the cam fingers and uh, adding an extra oil strain. Which sort of fits with uh, what uh, old dirty garage guy was saying about the problem. But like I say, he didn't he didn't produce any hard numbers. Uh, no, um, for example, data around the proportion of warranty claims as against sales at a particular mileage threshold. So that's the data you want. You want a big data set that includes post-2021 bikes with, say, 20,000 miles on, there or thereabouts and uh, what proportion of those bikes sold with the 790-890 engine have been found to have the premature camshaft wear. That's the only data that I would consider informative. So we take a big data set we look at all the post-2021, i.e. post-modification, all the post-modification uh, engines at around the uh, 20,000 mile mark, give or take, when these issues are meant to present. And we look at how many warranty claims for that issue there have been. That's what we need to know. We need to know uh, how big that percentage figure is. And until somebody comes up with that information, I'm uh, loath to give any of it any uh, credibility. So, yeah, and equally, 
And again, anecdotally, there are plenty of examples, plenty of examples of the uh, KTM 790 engines doing pretty high mileage, 40, 50, and uh, in one case over 62,000 miles and going strong. I'm sure there's more than one case, I'm just talking about one case that's uh, featured on YouTube. So I. So uh, ain't that interesting? A body of thought on the one hand that says all these bikes are going to bloody pack in at uh, 20,000 miles, and another school of thought says plenty of bikes out there doing 40, 50, 60, no issues. All lacking the, uh, shall we say, uh, trustworthy empirical data that would uh, normally support a particular point of view. Interesting stuff. As you know, this is my CF Moto 800 MT that I absolutely love has the uh, later modified uh, 790 KTM designed engine, albeit made by CF Moto. And this bike has a four year warranty. So, uh, still not overly concerned, but if there are issues and it's within my ownership of this bike, which I fully intend to be at least two years, then uh, you'll get to know about it. Because as I've said from the, out, uh, from the outset, this bike's all about putting my money where my mouth has been, extolling the virtues of Chinese made bikes. So we shall see. Hey hey! Always a bit of controversy in the biking world, isn't there? 